Good day folks and welcome back to the channel. We're at the Human Comedy today. We're doing the Alsace race. Shall we check out the car? What we're going to use? It's an engine swap. We're going to use the Mini Cooper S. Car settings will be Comfort Soft on the tyres, as you can see there, top left hand corner. K20C1 Civic 20. We're running approximately 464, 465pp, target of 465. We're running 188 brake horsepower. Fully customisable suspension, fully customisable diff. Fully customizable ECU tuned down to 73. You get no front downforce options in this car because none of them are adjustable, but we've got the rear tuned to 116. No ballast, but the power is structured down to 70. Fully customizable racing transmission with the top speed set to 320. Massively high for what we're dealing with here, but that's all about getting the right gears for the corners. I've matched it a little bit. We probably won't all the way get to the end of there, but it's purely to keep the power under control. No nitrous, no additional turbocharger. The Antelag system is on strong with a racing intercooler. Everything racing except for the horse manifold, which is down on normal. Carbon brakes, racing brake pads, racing clutch. Now, we don't normally do this. And I'm going to edit to this part. So I'm going to go back. We're down to the custom shop. You can see the skin for the first time. It's another JB special from GTP Addictions. It really does. It was my request to have the Union Jack roof, but with black, not blue. And he's just trimmed up with my race number and some other little interesting parts. Subscribe button on the back, folks, just to let you know that I am here and... I am looking for subscriptions, looking to get to that magic number, which we're on our way to, and I thank you all for, for doing so. It's really appreciated. So, extras will be a Type B front splitter. On the rear, a Type A. It just removes the bumper. And then on the wing, we're taking the Type A. Not the Type B, which is the big one. It kind of messes up the paint as well. But that, that Type B on the rear... Is it gives you a dropping PP, which we could probably increase a bit more power. But to suit the skin, we're going to go that way. Now, there was two other skins to choose from. Because our friend JB did a, did a couple. So, sort of similar rear. Similar black, red and white scheme. Nothing on the roof. Which is nice, because I think it gives that transition between the two. Slightly different wheels, but not what we're going to use to race with because we need a bit more sidewall. Union Jack on the bonnet, spoon on Motorsports Type R, which reflects the the engine swap. And the third option for the skins today with the Spoon Sports Type R. Now that that's really, really nice. Really do like the sides on that. Union Jack bonnet, YouTube banner, JB monogram on the left hand side. Again, same similar type of wheels with green flesh and a good looking rear end like that. So I could have picked any one of those three skins. And with that, folks, we're going to turn the wheels up to 12 inch. We're going to make them wide. And we're going to give them the wider size there, look. Just to give the car a bit more width and presence on the road. It's a good looking skin, JB. Thank you very much. JB continues to provide skins for this, for, for this series of races. Purely his choice. He contacts me, lets me know if there's, let's, asks me if there's anything I want. And, uh, Again, it's great. Thanks, JB. You are really contributing, and I thank you very, very much. Here we are then, folks. Let's look at the settings. 
Assist settings are traction control 1, default ABS, I'm driving manual, everything else is off. And controller settings, open button configuration, zero steering sensitivity, force feedback max torque 5, force feedback sensitivity 5. Look at the ranking board. I'm currently top of my friends list with the A220. JB, my Skinner guy, sits there in my old preferred car for this race, the 308 GTB. Today we're taking the Mini to the track to see if we can dominate the top friends list and see if we can get to 26 laps. I'm still happy with 25, but these are engine swaps. Massive problems with these races, the PPs are so low that ultimately you really are kicking the hell out of these cars. You're overweighting them, you're really seriously downgrading the power just to get them to meet the low PP rating. So I don't know if we hold out for it. Top 10 stars, we don't stand a chance, folks. This car is no longer applicable, the uh, the 2J70. It was a suspension glitch that allowed this car to get into this race um, because it detuned the PP. Not possible anymore, can't even do it with my car, my 2J, I can't, I can't show you. So we've just got to do what we can. 28 laps and 27 for the TJ. If we can get the Mini there, which I don't think we can, we've had to really tame it quite a bit, but let's see where we can go. And just to confirm, folks, we are using the top high wing. Um, I probably didn't mention it in the clips back there, but I chose the wing that suited the roof line. Doesn't work with the PP. So had to change the top ring, and uh, we'll go from there. But let's see how the race goes. going to leave it in power one we're gonna push this car as hard as we can we're on soft tires so we're looking like potentially 10 lap pit stops it's got a little bit of speed the old mini getting a bit of a nudge there from the AI on another one and we're up to fourth place already it looks like get on the brakes early here down to second and these are the right gears for these corners because you really lengthen that gearbox it does hamper you a bit on acceleration but you're not going to get the traction if you really mess with the gearbox that much to try and get that acceleration speed back what we're talking about here is beating the rest of the field and I don't know if they've changed something in it in the setup of the game but I don't know if we're going to get the raging VW camper coming back through we're up to third place already it's, this Mini does absolutely tank around this course and we're, as we're up with the likes of a 300 SL we are we're doing right in this little Paddy Hopkirk inspired Mini and it's doing the mini race in the week that I've bought myself a little mini. A little John Cooper Works, which will appear at the weekend. I don't know if it deserves a, uh, a little video of its own, a little blog type video on the channel. I don't know. I don't know whether people would want to see the introduction to my little car. can always let me know in the comments if it is something you want to see and I'll I'll talk you through what I've bought yes if you're interested however back to the race so come around to complete lap one I've got a break early with this car it it's got the carbon full set of brakes on but they're absolutely not really that effective because of purely the tires that are on the car car's quite directional being front wheel drive you have to turn that steering wheel and drive it around it please forgive me I'm drinking fruit juice and it's repeating on me terribly oh however that's life let's get on see the blimp up there nine laps so we're gonna get ten laps in on this first stint potentially a two-stopper we're gonna put mr. Hazal behind us now and then we're gonna run for the hills Got to look for that Spanish guy in the camper van. 
can't remember his name. Can anybody remember him? Overshot the apex, which lets Mr. Hazel back. They take a very different approach through this corner than, than I would like to. I take wide in and wide out. They're very much tighter. I might get round his outside of this corner. A trail break round him. There we go. Now we should leave him behind, one hopes. You can turn this in, lift off the throttle, and the back end will just come round and make the car steer. And get the power on again. So I'm 100% sure I'm not the only engine swap in this race, because that Beetle bus will be, will also be an engine swap but I haven't seen him, I can't see the name, purple sector in which is to be expected, we've overshot the breaking point again as we do as we take the lead all the time, because we haven't got the lead cars giving us the, the line, but we don't tend to race with the uh, racing line on, that's not something I tend to favour. I know the circuits well enough to not use the racing line or the braking markers. Maybe I should, but I'll take the rough with the smooth. If I overshoot one, I'll have to make it back up. That's my fault. We're not racing the AI, you see. We're, we're racing the clock, which makes it an altogether different race. You never really know. If I can get 26 laps, I will be absolutely stunned. But this is a quick little car. I was hoping to get a bit more fuel economy out of it, try and make a one-stopper. But 225s, is that going to be 25 laps? It'd be nice to be 26. set the fastest lap as well now we've taken it off Mr Hizal let's look at the wear on the fronts so I think I'm going to now move the brake balance to the rear try and give us some chance but I don't intend to change the tyres be able to get away with not changing them but I wouldn't anticipate that that will be the case I don't know if we can it's just fueling and I don't remember this to be an excessively long refueling pit stop seen some comments on, on, you, on Facebook recently where there's been some discussion about the time it takes it to refuel in the pits. Certain races it seems absolutely ludicrous. Um, Lego Majore, for example, there's some exceedingly long pit times in there for fueling. The other one is... Uh, deep forest one there's some significant time to fuel up in there oh I think I've overshot that I'm going to use first to slow it down oh, there we go, well done back into second no engine damage thankfully in this game not through changing down, gearbox should be damaged etc so we were just a little bit slow on that lap due to some overshoots I think six seconds in the lead I think I heard some excessive burbling in the, uh, in the rear of the car from the single exhaust I don't remember my little mini making quite so much noise because I've owned one of these and it was uh, slightly modified back in the day running a 1.4 litre engine rather than the standard 1275 
but it didn't drive like this at all. It was much more drivable. And uh, it was a lovely little car, but I had to part with it. It was far too quick from A to B. It wasn't a particularly good long distance car. I don't suppose any of them are, but it was extremely fast around town. And it, it, was, it was dangerous for me. Uh, too many encounters, encounters with the local boys in blue. Too many speed traps. And I was exactly the kind of guy they were trying to catch. Because I would. It drive it like a goat car. It absolutely was. I had 13-inch um, mini light wheels. And oh, I widened the stance by some 150 mil overall outer edge to outer edge and it was just in oh it was an impressive little car it would do everything you asked of it and it would it just had a starting problem that was the only issue it had when it got wet when it rained it didn't want to keep running it it just hated the rain it had a decent coil pack on it that would give it a good spark but then the spark would jump the uh, coil leads off and it was it was a frustrating car for me because I needed reliability at the time and I was traveling 50 miles to work in it every day and back and I didn't actually see the benefit of owning it so we let it go we let it go really really cheap and I I do know it no longer exists whilst I had the garage up the road a good friend of mine completely redo the floors, weld in new floors, tackle any rust that was in the floors to make it good. The engine wasn't going to survive, not after the tanking I'd given it. But it was a 1992 Mini in the old shape before the Mini 1 in the classic shape, the same as this. This one we're just approaching I believe. Another 227 last lap, which is all right. Quick drink, break for the corner, trail break in, accelerate out. But it does slide one hell of a lot, and it was even worse when adding weight, trying to add power back in you do have that possibility to trade it off if you wanted to put the turbo on and you wanted to add 200 kilo of weight and throw it all the way to the rear or front depending on which way it was going to go I think you'd have to throw it to the rear to balance the car up but you could potentially get a bigger turbo one and potentially more speed but it's at the expense of laps, laps of fuel because you're going to consume more fuel with the turbo of course Unless there's some secret recipe that I haven't found. But this is all about engine swaps. This uh, this little series of videos we're doing. And I can only do the videos where, where an engine swap would be applicable. I still want to do Autopolis with an engine swapped. Um... Cappuccino, but unfortunately I've screwed mine up by putting my car, my engine into a, a wide body and you can't remove the wide body unfortunately. So you're not even with a new body shell, which is a shame. But I'm not entirely sure if, if it's still compliant, just like the old um, 2J Chaparral whether that would comply just put the fastest lap in there he is Mr Ordinez has just taken my fastest lap by 0 0.06 and he's coming through the field in his in his beetle bus and we're probably going to be on a similar pit stop strategy to him it would be nice if we could do 13 laps but that isn't going to be the case
front tyres are looking good. A little bit frustrated by Mr. Ordonez running running that fastest lap. That's a bit frustrating. We're going to have to do better than that, aren't we, folks? See if we can rob a bit on the corners and then detune ourselves and get her into these corners. Come on. Breaking early, really getting the power down. I think I want to be straight line in the corners just a wee bit more rather than doing the exaggerated elongation of the corner. I want to try and straight line a bit short and the distance we travel rather than lengthen it by trying to keep the corners flowing. I hear that uh, burble on the overrun there. That's quite stunning. So we are only two seconds ahead of... Eight seconds ahead of Hizal. Possibly two seconds a lap faster. And that's why Ordinez is climbing through the ranks. He's up to fourth now. We have to make progress a bit. going to be trading a few times I think with Ordinez now a 227.2 again front end's wheel spinning a bit even though I've got traction control one on 9.2 seconds in the lead. Orton is still in fourth. Going to try and make ground here. I want to put a lovely flying lap in. So just as we concentrate, I'll let my brain wander a bit and talk about some other rubbish. So going to buy the car this weekend. We're going home. We're going back to where... I first lived, having moved out from my parents' home some oh, 27 years ago, 28 years ago, maybe longer, 28 years ago, and I, uh, I moved to a little place near Leicester, a place called Hinkley, where I bought my first car it was quite a surprise to find the site of this car to be just five or six miles from where I used to live and we did take a trip back to the house where the first house I I could say I rented after leaving home so I'm starting to chase jobs which I think if you're in my age bracket you'll remember you did or if you were lucky enough to find lo work locally, maybe you did that. However, I wasn't. My career aspirations were greater than that. I felt I needed to move away to to find something more. And I, I think I've done quite well in these years. Not many people can say they moved to London, bought a house in London, and then moved out again just did what I needed to do at the jobs I got and set myself up nicely I probably haven't made the wisest decisions along the way, probably dealt with a lot of emotion in my decisions and a 25-7 Mr. Orton he's, he's still ahead of me, the swine I didn't see that we cut a bit early on that apex might get a telling off three laps left That'll get take us to the end of 10. Ordinez has already pitted in. Look at that. And we're still ahead of him. We haven't had to fight him at all. This is great news for us. So he's taking his fuel on board now. I cut that apex just a wee bit too hard. got to remember you've just got to take the flying lines a bit you've just got to smooth those lines out it's 
so the car I've just purchased I was talking about buying something a bit bigger than this well the economy's changed a little bit in the UK over the last six months prices have gone up inflations have gone up the cost of everything has gone up this is naturally the fallout from the pandemic the government has spent so much money on supporting the public doing things for businesses we've then got the war in Europe that you've got Brexit to throw into that you've got everything else and the interest rates have gone up so I was looking to buy my last ever car those plans have changed now I was gonna buy something of American muscle and had a chat with my wife over the weekend and she said it didn't seem a wise thing to do to invest such a massive amount of money in in a single piece of steel even though it's a classic car and I think it's one that would be absolutely stunning in the right color potentially with a supercharger on in a later date give it around about 800 brake horsepower if required and uh, well those plans are gone for now so we bought a little car a John Cooper works mini with a few tasteful mods all declared to the insurer and with that we're going to uh, potentially have a bit of fun for three or four years until the finance situation settles down I ran a 28 there because I went off the track let's see what we can do we've got two laps to make amends Mr Connor Moss he's now gone into the pits with 12% of fuel left yeah these tyres are easily going to last the race the rears are going to beautifully last the race so we're just pitting for fuel to lap another back marker it's the mini again isn't it he's getting the blue flags come on mr. Potts father of pepper Potts everybody's favorite Iron Man character oh there's a dream weekend 23 seconds into the lead I'm hoping this is a 20 second pit stop or less and we come out in the lead 24 seconds in the lead Mr. Hizal yet to pit we're going to go one more lap we need to make some sort of calculations on timing to do three more laps in eight minutes I think that's possible that was a 26.050 so we've still not got the fastest lap he's still punching them out look Mr. Maraglino has taken to the pits on softs. Mr. McEwen has gone in. We are really starting to now need to put in, pump in some lap times. There needs to be quick ones with the lower fuel. The tyres are great, so 
we must remember to pit. So getting back, I'm quite excited about picking up the car. If there's a reason that I'm not around on Saturday and you don't see a video, well, potentially it's because I'm out messing around with the with the sport mode and the anti-lag and oh yes, it's that good a car. It's it's got everything. It's got the bells and whistles, and they believe me, it's bells and whistles. got um, independent coilover suspension on all corners it's got uh, manifold to rear scorpion exhaust system full system um, for the benefit of the insurance company it has got sports cats we're into the pits we almost forgot we're not changing tires Thankfully, I was talking about the car then, I'm not thinking. So we're going on 3%, 34 seconds in the lead. And we're taking all the fuel. If anybody has noticed, it's not a particular company that I'm drinking the drink of. It is fruit juice. Here we go, we're away. No penalties, it seems, for crossing any white lines or yellow lines, thankfully. I did enter the pits a bit late. Mr. Mangiano has gone to the pits on 10% fuel. And we are out of the... And Mr. Brooks. And we are out of the pits, in the lead again. 11, six, 11 seconds in front. a 226.050 in the previous lap and he's put in a 25.691 he's still there the same time as we did the 225.730 so we need to get on it again folks we need to start concentrating and putting these laps in I need to get a bit more confident on my late braking but look how much it runs through the apex that is shocking car has got so much impetus it's just got no grip on these tires really got to start to build that lead back up again really want us to get 13 laps in I think we're only going to get the start of the 13th lap before that ticks 30 and we potentially might have to short fill in the last section the last fill up which is going to be around 15 minutes to go but it's going to be 22 minutes odd so might be 12 minutes to the hour we might only get 25 laps in which will equal the Alpine's record but it shows that this Mini is very capable of winning this race with the engine swap I wonder what it'd be like at 650 pp in the uh, in the other race up at um, Kyoto, it's a shame it can't be in the K Cup race because it would. Mr. Hazal's gone in the pit. So's Mr. Takada. Takeda, and they were really on the bone. So they're going to one stop by the looks of it. Maybe not, they might have to splash and dash at the end. No, 
That means Mr. Ordinez has just got to overtake Mr. Lopez. I'm not seeing any faster laps from Mr. Ordinez. We blew that. That was particularly slow, wasn't it? I was too busy looking at the leaderboard on the left-hand side to see who was behind me. But we got 25 seconds in the lead now. So that pit stop has been eliminated from the from the lead but I think Mr. Lopez has got a pit and I would suggest Mr. Ordinez is going to pit in something like six more laps five more laps maybe so let's talk about the circuit of Alsace I believe it's fictional I don't know it's fictional, nothing could be this horrible. It really isn't one of my favourite tacks. It's not as if I... It flows nicely, but it's just... It just doesn't feel real. It feels like... It always feels like the extra circuit that was added to the pack to... To just fatten out the game. It's not one of my favourites. And I think that's obvious. It, it just not I oh know it's not it's not realistic in its elevation and it's it has that old feel to it it's it's quite bizarre there's there's other tracks in Gran Turismo that I'd rather they put in there was a Swiss mountain Swiss Valley one that Gran Turismo 3 4 and 5 but what I do know is there's a lot more coming to the game over the next 12 months. I believe there's, and I've seen this, but I couldn't quote it, so I'm just going to go with what's in my head, and I don't know whether I dream it, but I've seen that there are 400 more cars to come to the game over maybe the next two years. I believe there's something like 20 tracks programmed. I've seen a figure of 80 tracks possible to go into the game whether they all are or not and if I could quote it I would but I can't because I can't find the links because I, I see them scouring through the internet but there are a couple of other YouTubers that will quite happily put that information out into the market and back up with videos and that's what their niche is that isn't my niche it's just me waffling as I'm putting these laps in and trying to find a way to concentrate that's really what I'm trying to do let's look at the tyres with seven and a half laps to go with this fuel stint we've got really good tyres the backs aren't wearing at all in fact I'd say they're looking a bit cold if anything lap again last lap was a 228 I haven't really got to grips with this yet really being able to nail consistent laps I really want to put a string of 225s 226s together just to really demonstrate how really quite straight quite straightforward and easy this car to drive is but we have got a full almost a full load of fuel it depends how you want to drive the car if you want to drive it with lots of wheel spin and really modulate the throttle on the exit of corners you can you really can jack the power up by adding some weight if that's what how you want to drive the car personally Mr. Lopez has now just gone to the pits and Mr. Pinel, so ultimately Mr. Ordinez has now been set free he's got three or four laps to chase me down before he needs to pit again 
Mr. Boupoua will overtake. Mr. Mangiano will come through and take the third and fourth spot by the looks of it, maybe. Yeah, there's Mangiano. We're not hitting the apex there, are we? I'm going to have to break early, and here we go. Lapping this chap for possibly the third time in 14 laps. Mr. Potts, husband of Pepper. Oh, I've been dreaming about it already, haven't I? Sorry. The salt men and the secretarial types. Oh, dear. There might be an accident. Let's keep going. No purple sectors. No, we were 1.2 seconds down. That's the first corner. Got to get that first corner nailed and that apex on that 90 right. But it's a good view from here in the pit lane. through there come on let's try and do it now come on that's in the 27s we're all right 26s need to knock a second off that so first gear to get it into the corner accelerate up the hill steadily improving with the fuel weight 25.691 still by Ordinez and he's coming. We've got a 32 second lead. Try and do it from wide this time. Ordinez has now gone to the pit, so we're just opening this up now, folks. We're just pulling away from the pack. I'm going to break a bit early for this. I want to get the car in on the apex. There we go, almost hit it. 55 seconds in the lead. It looks like Ordinez was able to pit and get out without uh, being overtaken. But he is almost a minute behind. 24 minutes to go. Almost feels as if we need to sacrifice some weight and get the uh, low RPM turbocharger on. Coming round to our colleague, the mini driver, Mr. Bean. And I don't think, Mr. Bean, you know, there's an interesting topic. I don't think Mr. Bean has diminished the mini at all. I think he's given it another reason to be cute. Although Austin Powers in the Mini just gives it another reason to be... Oh, if you see what I mean. 56 seconds into the lead. Looking to take the fastest lap from Mr. Ordinez. And I've blown it going into that corner. Oh, my. Oh. The car just seemed to slide. It didn't seem to break. We've got damage now. Seven, just a sec. We were going to beat that lap time as well. We were on to beat that. Oh my lord, what am I like? Still damage. It's gone. So the left pull on the front wheel's now gone away. 57.6 in the lead. 22 minutes remaining. We've got five laps, including this one, till we pit. And we've shot through again. Lift, lift off the throttle. Maybe I didn't lift fully off the throttle. I was hoping to keep the throttle in there to drive the car through the bend. I'm actually full power at this point. Just trying to turn the car and get it round the corners. 
it feels lazy it feels slow it feels like we could definitely be getting more speed out of this but then it won't go around the corners so that's part of the issue like this 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 car has got the racing limited slip diff in it you'd never tell what I do know is my new Mini I don't believe has a diff so if the power is anywhere where I believe it to be it's going to be a handful until I can get it sorted standard it should be making somewhere in the region of 220 brake horsepower but I'm led to believe and it's not quotable I have to find out that it's got mods that support 280 brake but we'll find that out when we tear it apart we shall see break here get it into that corner modulate the brake a little bit it overrun that corner as I lift it off it's not a lap time beat of that 26.769 it's not my fastest second off that lap time come on we know we can do it almost a minute in the lead now there it is there's your minute flicked up second down don't forget folks when you're driving with traction control you only really get full delivery of the front wheel power if you're not turning more than three to five degrees as the steering unfolds unwraps you'll see that red and white flashing goes to solid white the idea is to keep the steering wheel within that zone so that you've got full power delivery and it's unrestricted but it's about getting those smooth corners after this one so we'll give it about 13 oh I don't even think we're going to get 24 laps in that could be horrific because we won't get the 25th lap oh if we don't do that that means the the Alpine's the better car and an engine swap is no good and should I actually post this video oh dear gotta get me anus in the gear come on move it Twenty six five oh six, it's still not the fastest, come on. We can do so much better than this. We're taking out two seconds a lap on Mr. Ordinez. Come on.
Let's go, car. Come on. See if we can get this moving. I can see another lap car there. That's not one of the minis. So we're coming round to the true back of the field. I wish we could engine swap a uh, a Fiat Bar 500 with like a Ventador engine. I know it's been done in real life. Not really sure what it would do on this circuit. Are we coming around to lap him for the fourth time? Yeah, it won't help though if we're on the grass. We're not doing very well here, folks. I want to do seven laps in 15 minutes. I just don't think that's going to happen. Seven laps in 15 minutes is 28 pace. That was the mini, and I gave him an unceremonious nudge, but he wouldn't get out of the way. I suppose I should have made room for him. Probably came up to him by surprise. 106 in the lead. So Ordinaire's by the looks it have given up. We're going to pit not this lap but the next lap. straight to get the power down there we go line ooh, line these two up that would be good oh he actually got stuck behind the little abarth whoa gravel it up we're coming round behind the Oh, come on, folks, help me out. My brain's gone dead. Is it a Plymouth Charger? Or is it a Dodge Charger? Challenger? I can't remember. We'll see in a minute when we go past it. It'll give us the little screen to tell us what it is. It won't because we've lapped them already. There's my American muscle car knowledge lacking again. Probably a good idea I didn't buy them one of them one then isn't it? Probably going to get four more laps in. Which will mean we don't equal our record. So the Mini with this setup is no good. Disappointed to say. We really have had to pin its ears back because of the low PP. I wonder if you can do better with this car with a standard engine and giving it some pep with some add-ons. There's the question. I think it's the economy that pulls it back. I think it's just its power and drivability. Maybe, maybe my preference for grip out of corners with a longer gear is where the problem is. 
but you're more than welcome to take the setup and do with it what you will. See if you can do better. I don't claim to be good at this game. I claim to just want to find interesting ways to play it. Sometimes they're not successful, but we are going to win the race, and that's what this channel is all about. Giving you alternate ways to get the golds. Here's the old Alpine. Alpine, as somebody say, some people say. We really did show him our heels. We're going into the pits this lap, so let's not fluff it up. laps we're going to take five laps of fuel don't change five laps bit of green drink just a little bit more than we needed So, 10 minutes. I don't think we're going to do it. I don't think we're going to get four laps in. I think we're going to miss. But we are going to be lighter on fuel. So we've got half a tank. But one minute 12 ahead of Mr. Bordenez. That's going to balance itself out in a minute. I'm sure it is because he's got to catch up. It stayed at 112 for, for some time back out to 113, 112 so actually that's real has he stopped for fuel as well I didn't notice that another lap car ahead Mr Mangiano's gone in Mr Lopez, Mr Cato, Mr Brooks they're all taking a splash and dash approach which is what we've done we should probably have given ourselves four laps of fuel, but that would have been that would have been quitting. So Ordinez is 55 seconds behind. So we did. We basically were stationary for 17 seconds. Even though we've got lesser fuel on board, we haven't got new tyres on, but we've got hardly worn tyres. And there's absolutely no reason to take mediums or hards. These tyres go all the way. We can try it on inters. Cornering speed wouldn't be as good as Mr. Harrington again. We get to pass this guy. Let's see if he leaves us the inside line. If not, we're going to lean on him. I really want to damage his car. Right, so that was the pit out lap. Chasing the Alpine down again. I suppose we've probably made far too many mistakes really. Like that one, not making the apex. We should probably do three races and see which is the fastest skin. See if I can improve my time over three races and do three races on screen. Oh, fastest lap, fastest sector. Around the outside of Mr. Adam. Mr. Apples Adam. 
Mr. Hazel's gone to the pits. Do we anticipate Mr. Mr. Ordinez is going to go to the pits again? trouble making that apex as well trying to push that minute out on Ordnez and there's the minute 25, 6, 6, 7, fastest lap is ours. Let's see if that puts a fire in Ordinance's belly and he tries to get that lap back. Engine swap for engine swap. We've got the faster car over one lap. And it looks like we've got the fastest car over. Oh, 23, 24. Will we get 25 laps in to make it match the Alpine, the race car? I see a car in the sunshine. Is it the Mini again? It's the 500. Mr. Orlando. Mr. Ordinez has gone to the pit, so there's a chance we could be 1 minute 25, 1 minute 30 seconds in the lead. Depends how long he pits for. He's not going to take a full lap of fuel. There's a full stack of fuel. He's just taking fuel on now. 36% he's taking. If he's leaving the pits now, we are over half a lap ahead time wise there's the mini and the next real victim to overtake let's see if we can get him on the inside outside for this corner he was trying to show us who's boss but Beanie ain't going to get it It looks like we're going to get to the 25th lap, folks. It's a beautiful car. So 258. We've got 20 seconds to spare by the looks of it on lap 25. All we don't need is to be spun off the circuit, struggled to recover and failed the 25th lap. So we were just 0.8 of a second off the fastest lap there. And that possibly came with just pushing a little too hard. So we've just come past an absolutely stunning Lamborghini. And again, we come up against another absolute stunner for its generation. Ugly pig doctor that is, though. But it's a stunning car. It's one brand of car I've never had the opportunity to drive. Come on, Mr. Konomos. You did your best to park that on the apex.
That sun is absolutely stunning. If only I could have a a little sun blind to, to flap down. We would be we would be good. We'll see how she goes. One minute thirteen in the lead. We were hoping for more. That little splash and dash at the end gave him a little bit of an advantage. So. I say a little bit of advantage, it was a reduced fuel stop, but he stopped three times, we've stopped twice. And we've got exactly the right amount of fuel. We've probably actually overfueled to the point where we overfueled till we took 5.4. So that means we'll cross the lap with about 0.2. I've never ended a race in the pit stop. I don't in the pit lane. I don't know what would happen if we did that. Are we going to get the fireworks on the final lap, or is it going to be night time as we come round on the final lap? And here we go, folks. The time is ticking down to zero, five, four. Three, two, one. We've got the race. Race one. I'm a hundred percent believe. The hour is done. We're not a minute into the lap yet, so everybody else is going to get. Uh, we're going to put a lap on everybody because they're going to cross the line and take the flag. the circuit again just being casual but we're one minute 15 ahead they have still to cross the line there he goes Boubois beats Ordinez Lopez Ordinez Ordinez just finished I can only imagine that Ordinez went to the pits we'd have seen him go to the pits he must have had a rubbish finish they're all finishing now. We will come round and take the checkers flag. And uh, that's been an eye opener. It, it performed relatively well. It was a bugger to drive, I'm afraid. It's not as it's not a satisfying car to drive by any means. It doesn't really dig into the corners and give you any sort of reassurance it's going anywhere. It's it's a bit of a slow pig, underpowered. It needs far more. But it also needs to be able to turn corners. And that's the challenge with the setup. So, last chicane. Here we come over the line to take the flag. And there she is, 25 laps. That equals our record and another win under the belt. A gold finish. Everybody lapped. The Gordini in second place. The Fair Lady in third. And then the Beetle Bus in fourth. Fastest lap of the race goes to us. And there's the little stunner in the replay. I'm not going to leave that to record. look on from there and here we go to the end let's have a look at the ranking board did it come top of the tree no the Alpine was the faster car and we don't get anywhere near the top 10 stars and that's it folks can I just uh, raise a hand for JB again say thank you very much sir it's appreciated and to all of those of you who have subscribed and continue to watch the videos it really is uh, really is good of you to do so I've seen some comments this week about, you know, helping people out through all of these menus and people are subscribing because I've been able to do that and that's what I'm here to do, folks. 
doesn't cost anything I'm I'm putting as much effort as I can to keep the content real and to keep you passing the game it's not just about you those people that have done it but it's all about those people who are to come I'm trying to keep the game relevant by all of these updates are being done at the various stages of the game I believe we're waiting for nine cars in the next update at the end of January February will be PSVR 2 and the ability to do um, VR which I won't be bringing to you straight away because I don't own a PS5 but if the channel gets to a point where it can support it that's what we'll do and uh, at the end of the day thank you very much folks please click that button and we'll see you on the next one take care goodbye